Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is B. if you guys didn't know, and um, we are just gonna do a chit chat, get ready with me type video. I know it's been a really long time since I've filmed anything and I can just kind of give you a life update. Um, I am gonna be trying out a couple of new products as well, so if you guys wanna see all my new products, then just keep on watching. It's a race against time right now. I'm trying to use natural lighting and the sun is setting. I've already got my eyebrows on and I just discovered a new product which I really love and I don't know why I waited so long to pick this item up but it is the MAC Paint Pot. I mean it's not new, it's new to me. And I really, really love this product. We are going to go ahead and use this as an eyeshadow base today. And I kind of have a different style setup going on right now and I don't know how I like it because for the past year and a half I've been filming with a camera that has a flip up screen so I'm used to looking at the top of my camera but now I'm looking off to the side so we'll see how that goes. Really loving that as an eyeshadow base and I'm just gonna use some loose powder to set it. Um, I've never, I haven't used it where I didn't set it even though it's not like tacky or anything. So the eyeshadow palette that we are gonna use today is the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette. I got it when it launched from Sephora and I haven't used it yet. I swatched a couple of colors but I'm sure you guys have seen what this palette looks like. This is what the palette looks like. It's very super colorful, but it's kind of warm. It's a little cool, but it has like these jewel tone colors and I really like it. The first shade I think I'm going to use as my transition shade. I'm gonna use this shade Eden right here. This one. So what has been going on with me and why my filming is literally, what, a month late, almost two months depending on, well, not two months, a little more than a month after, depending on when I put this video up, is because obviously I got, well, it's not obvious if you don't know me, um, I got displaced during um, Hurricane Harvey and I just haven't really been able to get back on track until just now and even like even getting this video set up going was, was really difficult. I mean I was trying to start literally 45 minutes ago. <laughs> My husband and I got displaced. Um, we got all our belongings. We didn't lose. The only thing we lost was our physical um, building you know because we lived in an apartment complex on the third floor so I mean it's not like we we didn't lose like our belongings we just lost our building it's really sad because we really loved where we lived and it was such a good area that we lived in it was hard on me because I'm I was literally homeless <laughs> but not to the point where like I lost all of my things I'm very fortunate to have all of my things so I can't complain too much, but not knowing where we were gonna go was the scary part. And like having to move out of our building and literally just find somewhere to live was the scary part. Luckily, my mother-in-law is nice enough to put us up for a couple of months because we don't know what we wanna do yet. Um, so we're, we're gonna stay with her for a couple of months just so we can gather our thoughts and figure out what we want to do. Um, I don't really like talking about my hurricane story because I feel like so many more people have it worse than me. And so I just don't like talking about it because even though I had to move, I got to move with all of my things and a lot of people didn't. And my heart breaks for a lot of people who are still having to deal with that kind of stuff and having to like fix their homes or just figure out where to move. I just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what, what to say. But the next shade I'm going to use is this purple shade. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just do purple. It's this one right here. It's called 
uh, amethyst, put it right on top of the Eden shade that we just used. Quality of my video looks a little different. It's definitely different. Um, I'm actually filming on my iPhone because I wanted to see what it would look like before I made a decision about the next camera I wanted to buy. I love my Sony, but it's just not working out for me um, as much as I want it to. So I am doing something slightly different. Plus I don't have like the space right now um, because I am living with my mother-in-law to just set up my, um, my makeup where I want. I, it's kind of crazy. I wish I could show you guys. Like I used to have what every other YouTuber has. I had an Alex drawer and then I had the tabletop desk and I still have my Alex drawer and I still have my tabletop desk, but it's not set up. So I had to break it down every, I have to set it up and break it down every time I, I want to film. And this is the first go around. So we'll see how that goes. But what I was trying to say is I don't have a lot of stuff. I had to really like go through my makeup, get rid of some things and, or just pack a lot of it away. And I did have to pack a lot of the stuff that was on top of my desk. I only have these two brush containers. This is all I have. I used to have like four brush containers and I would just have them laid out on my desk and then I do have my little by allegory lipstick tray that has like the 16 slots on it and I do have lipstick sitting on there and then I have one empty Bath and Body Works candle that has some liquid lipsticks in it and that's pretty much all I have on top of my Alex drawer. I have to hide away my desktop. I can't have it laying out. I'm literally in the middle of my bedroom. <laughs> I like it and I think I want to just deepen it up a little bit on the outer corner. I'm gonna use a smaller, more precise brush and I'm gonna go into the shade, I think it's called Weed, this one right here. And I'm just gonna build it up on the outer corner. And I do have her other palette, to be 100% honest. I really wasn't using it. I mean, I did my video on it when I first got the palette and then I might have used it like one or two more times, um, but I, recently pulled it out when this palette launched because I was like, you know what? I need to I need to play with that palette because the sister palette's coming. And I really enjoyed wearing that palette. So I've been challenging myself to pull palettes that I haven't really been using or haven't used in a while. So the first time I thought about doing that, I, I did the Manny X Makeup Geek palette and I used it for the work week and it was amazing. I got so many compliments on my eyeshadow that week and I made it through the whole week, all five days, different looks. So when I heard that the Desert Dust palette was about to launch, I was like, you know what? That week that it launched, I pulled out the rose gold palette and I used it every day and I created a different look every day. So I started off really soft and then I ended up going really bold at the end of the week just because of the different colors I was using, but I really liked it. So I wanted to challenge myself to pull out old palettes and use that one eyeshadow palette for the week. And it's really been working out for me. I really like that idea. I think it's great that way my palettes that get lost in the mix are getting a little love too. Okay, so I was just adding more of that amethyst color in there and I am bringing it all the way into my inner corner and then that weed color really just deepened that outer. Okay, so for the lid shade, I kind of wanted to use this royal color right here and then I kind of want to also add in like this topper over here because the palette has I think three toppers, two duo chromes, and this is a pure, pure um, or a pressed glitter rather, and I, <sighs> this one right here, I don't like it. I mean, not that I don't like it, I just, when I touch it, it gets everywhere. I am going to use a flat shader brush to pick up the shade Royal and just pack it all over my lid. Now this color does have some fallout, so I'm kind of glad I don't have my complexion on. Okay, so we just packed on the eyeshadow and now I kind of do want to use, I think I want to use retrograde as the topper right here, this one in the far corner, this one. And I'm just gonna apply that with my finger right 
on the top. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go back into my blending brush. Blend it out. That retrograde color had a lot of fallout. Um, yeah, now that I'm like blending it, it kind of just fell off. Like it's not there anymore. Yeah, like I blended it and it's like literally not on my eyes anymore even though I used my finger to apply it. That kind of sucks. That sucks a lot, actually. Now, retrograde is all on my under eyes and not on my eyeshadow. So that's a little frustrating because I thought it would have the best payoff as being packed with my finger, but obviously you need a glitter glue because it just fell out. Okay, so I just grabbed some makeup wipes. These are kind of my favorite right now. It's the Rice um, Brightening one. It smells like skincare but it does remove my makeup really well, so I really like it. It's 80 sheets for like 13 bucks at Ulta. I mean, it is literally all over my face. Like, I can't believe it. And I'm wondering if all the toppers are like that where you just have to use a glitter glue. I mean, I'm not knocking it, but I think it's kind of silly that packing it with your finger is not enough. And then blending it obviously knocked it all out. I'm gonna have to play with the other shades. I think they are um, the pressed pearls. That's what they are. They're pressed pearls and I just, I think I have to play with it a little more. I mean, I kind of figured I'd have to use a glitter glue with Cosmo because it's a pure pressed glitter. But I mean, with the other ones, I kind of really like Really, I have to use a glitter glue for that one. All the other shades that I used were pretty great, so I don't have any complaints. Royal picked up really nicely, and I'm kind of happy with this. Like, I kind of wish there was more, but I don't want to put on a glitter glue just to add more to it. Okay, so for a liner, I'm going to use the Lottie London Winged Woman, and I normally don't do this on camera just because I suck at it, but um, I am gonna try to wing it out. That's the best I can do. <laughs> um, I really do like this eyeliner. I think it kind of dried out a little fast though. I'm not entirely sure, but I do like this eyeliner and I just, I've been out of touch with doing winged liners, so. That's why they look janky, but we're going to ignore that. And I'm just gonna use some trusty lashes that I know will work. These are my Queen Bee. I feel like lashes just make looks look better. Okay, so now that we have our lashes on, we're gonna work on the face. We are going to use a pore filling primer. I also have found while doing my makeup every single day for work for the past three weeks, I have found that I cannot use anything on my T-zone area other than a pore filling primer because that is where I have the biggest pores. That is where my makeup looks the worst throughout the day. And I just, you know, an eight hour workday, nine hour workday, just depending on how long I'm at the office, I gotta look good. Okay, if I'm gonna put the effort to put a face on, I need to look good all day long. So far right now, I really do like the Smashbox one and I really do like the Cover FX one. I don't have the full size of the color Cover FX one, but I am going to use, I'm going to use this foundation today. It is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. This is in the shade Cream Beige. I think this is my shade. I don't know what my foundation shade is anymore because after I went to my vacation, what was it, at the end of May, I just, I've gotten darker and my skin just said, no, we're not going back to your pale shade anymore. So I don't know what my shade is anymore. I'm hoping this is my color. So it comes with this little spatula and I'm just going to apply it directly to my face. Wet n Wild website has an really good foundation matcher. It's not one of those where you're like, oh, I have medium tan skin and I am a blah 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 undertone. No, it's more like a what's your foundation shade in XYZ brand and then they do a comparison which I really love because I know what shade I am in a different brand so that helps me out so much more than, you know, going through like a little 
stupid quiz. I'm gonna blend it out with a beauty blender and this is kind of more neutral pink than I would like. Okay, so this is one layer. I don't even know if I want to build it up just because it's not terrible, but it's also, it feels a little, it's still tacky. It's not heavy, but I feel like if I added another layer, it would be heavy. So I don't want to do that. I don't have any new concealers to try, so I'm just going to use my Tarte Shape Tape. Yeah, so I don't know how I feel about... I don't know how I feel about that foundation because it said it was the closest shade to my L'Oreal Pro Matte in Camel Beige, which is now my normal shade, which is really crazy because I used to be like 105 Natural Beige, but no, Camel Beige is my... Uh, is my color now and it match this one actually matches my neck really well this one I think is just a little bit too much on the neutral pink side but in the jar they just look they look very similar so okay so I am also gonna do a little tiny bit of cream contouring I'm going to use my Tarte Pro Glow you guys know what this looks like and I am going to use this sculpting shade and I'm going to use this bigger um, flat shader brush. My sideburns, dude. Baby hairs, sideburns. I got the works going on right now. Let's just eliminate this double chin while we're at it. And do a little bit of this little number. Okay, now that I blended out all of the cream contour, I'm gonna go in and use this sculpting shade in the powder form and I'm just gonna lay that right on top of everywhere I just went so I can set it I'm just going to set the rest of my face with this Maybelline Fit Me powder in the shade medium 25 and I'm just going to use a duo fiber brush and just kind of set the rest of my face. I'm going to add a little bit more warmth to the skin and I'm going to use this Park Avenue Princess Bronzer by Tarte. It's a shimmery bronzer so I'm just going to lightly go over my cheeks, run this across my forehead, warm me back up. I'm just going to work on my lower lash line now so I'm going to go back into this palette and I'm going to use my favorite brush for that which is the Crown um, dual headed brush. I don't know what it's called anymore. I think like C74, but anyway, it has a flat end and it has a pencil brush on the end and I really love it. I'm going to go into the shade Amber right here and I'm just going to tap that right by my lower lash line. With the pencil end, I'm going to go into Amethyst and I'm going to run that under there too. Okay, and so for my brow bone highlight, which I forgot to do, we are gonna use the shade Desert Sand. It's this one right here. It's more of just like a neutral, I wanna say it's like a neutral peachy shade, but it's not, it's the lightest shade in there. So I'm just gonna put it right here just so that it blends. Guess I can put some black eyeliner on my waterline and blend that out. I'm not really good at that, but. So we'll do that, let me see. Get really close here.
Mine is literally on the waterline. I don't like getting black eyeliner or anything like that like right underneath the lash line. I have to have it in the waterline. So if it doesn't look blended out, that's why. I struggled so long with black eyeliner and just wearing black eyeliner in my waterline and struggling with the fact that they're so creasy right here or that my lower lash line is so like, I don't know, it, it protrudes out a little bit more so my eyeliner always got stuck there and I looked like a raccoon. I looked like I always had raccoon eyes so I try so hard to not have eyeliner go below my waterline so I don't particularly like blending out my eyeliner. I don't know how anybody does that. I'm gonna go with an oldie but a goodie. This is Coralista by Benefit. And I'm just gonna use this on a angled brush and just tap it on the apples of my cheeks. And I really love this blush because it also has that sheen to it so it also kind of highlights as it's blushing. And while you can go a little heavy handed, it's also forgiving. And for highlighter, I'm going to use the Wet n Wild Precious Petals Highlighter. This is new to my collection. This is what it looks like, this beautiful peachy gold. I mean, do we like it or do we not like it? It kind of gives like this really like wet effect, which I'm not mad about. I really like that. And for lips, we are going to use the shade Kava, and this is the Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche Liquid Lipstick, which I I kind of really like. I like this formula a lot. I love the packaging. It looks really cute. It kind of has that NARS packaging where it's like that uh, kind of soft touch, and it shows the color at the bottom. So it's kind of, it's described as a muted lilac nude, and it's the VIB Rouge exclusive color, so duh, I had to get it. It also makes me look a little dead, but that's okay. So part of me really loves liquid lipsticks. Part of me really wants to be more consumer friendly and get like traditional bullet lipsticks, but I don't ever reach for them. So pretty much 90% of my collection right now is all liquid lipsticks and I just don't ever reach for the traditional bullet style ones. I don't know if you're the same way. I've just kind of evolved into this, okay, I'm going to try every kind of liquefied lipstick, not necessarily that matte liquid lipstick trend just a liquid lipstick because it's easier to carry it i mean it's you know you have a doe foot applicator as opposed to you know the bullet form and i just i know it's a little bit more expensive to get the liquid lipstick kind but i knew that if i got this shade in like the pencil form that they make or even the bullet lipstick i wouldn't even use it so i'm kind of glad i got this it's moisturizing i'm 99 percent sure it's not transfer proof i'm not gonna prove it though because i just put it on and that's like wasting product and i'm not gonna do that so now we set the face and i'm going to use my trusty Smashbox primer water because I don't have anything new at the moment. All right, you guys, that is going to be it for today. I know it was a chit chat, get ready with me. I really didn't chit chat that much, but I just kind of talked. And oh, one more thing. I just want to give a huge shout out to my subscribers. I met one sus subscriber, not met, but I we kind of started following each other on Twitter due to the hurricane because she was a follower of Laura Lee. So we, that's kind of how we connected. And I guess she found out that I had a YouTube channel. <laughs> I don't really promote it. Like I, I'll link it and I'll say, hey, I posted a video, but I don't really like promote it. I like for things like that to happen organically. And so she found me on YouTube. So anyway, I 100,000% appreciate all of the people who are subscribed to my channel and the coolest moment happened where she I guess was at a library and she saw somebody else watching YouTube while she was at the library and she recognized the person on the video that she was watching and it was me <laughs> so that was
is pretty crazy that, you know, two people somewhere in this city were watching me, which I thought was so cool. And even though I may never meet them, or if I do meet them, just, I love you. It's, it, it's a huge moment for me because, you know, I do this for fun. It's kind of a hobby for me. It's kind of my therapy. So for two people that I kind of, well, one person that I connect with on Twitter, um, to say, hey, I watched your videos and oh my God, I ran into somebody else who was watching your videos. That to me is the best. I will never forget this moment ever in my entire life. If I never go anywhere with YouTube or if I become really big in YouTube, which, you know, that's always the goal. But if I don't ever get there or if I do, this moment right here will always be my first moment and I love it. Like I was a total fangirl for, for the girls that told me that they were watching me. So <laughs> I just want to say a huge shout out and a thank you for following me thank you for watching my videos if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel yet please subscribe join the family I'm gonna try 100% harder on getting videos and getting content up for you guys more often and that's all I got for you today so I will see you next time bye